it, it was a it was a it was a tough situation for both of them to be in. Pretty much. Yes. Yeah, we were all the sick. fight sucked. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. So, you said 10 rounds with your medal. And fucking what? You don't fucking need 10 rounds with a man. If you if you if you spend 10 rounds with one man, that's 5 rounds too long. The quickness of Adesanya to evade these high kicks. Hands down, just leaning back out of the range of those kicks. He's got to be very careful. I just want to fight the like some of the baddest in the game. I did Robert, so if Romero's available, let's see what's up. Nobody wants to fight Yo Romero. Israel wants to fight him. Israel has the title. Um, Israel feels that his legacy will not be complete if he doesn't beat Yo Romero. How do you not respect that? Lots of respect for Adesanya for taking this fight. I mean, really, he didn't need to. Win or lose, no one's ever made it look yeah. easy. So Adesanya is taking this fight because he wants to prove to everybody that he can beat Yo Romero easier than everybody else. And that, for me, is a huge credential on his record. Well, I can talk and I can walk, but time for talking is over, man. One of the things that's a little bit understated about Israel is just his work ethic. I mean, this guy is a machine. The reason why we haven't seen him since the Robert Whittaker fight is not really anything to do with him. It's the fact that it's been tough finding a challenger for him, a new opponent for him. Paul Acosta was supposed to be that guy when he beat Yola Romero, but Paul Acosta hasn't been healthy. He's been suffering injuries. So the UFC has basically been trying to find a suitable opponent. That guy is now the Romero. Obviously, contract negotiations and, and placings and locations and logistics sort of slow things down. But now that he's got an opponent, this whole time, he's been training like a madman. I think you only love me because I'm popping. This a layup, this a rebound, then it's driving. Tasting with the fade, not the air, my hands rocking. When I link with ball point, you know it's not, 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 not. You're going to be coming against a very, very, very motivated Yellow Romero, possibly a Romero with a chip on his shoulder. We heard that with the Paul Acosta fight, he felt that he was robbed and he felt that he won that fight and so that lit a fire under him and rather than going on a break or a holiday straight after that fight, he was back in the gym training. So I think his motivation is not so much this being his final title shot, I think it's just righting the wrong that in his mind was the Costa fight and also becoming the world champion. He, if Romero can't get this, he will probably be one of those guys that goes down in history books as the best that never was. With Israel, what he's been up to, I mean, we've spoken to the man a number of times and he has he's always been planning a holiday and then he always cancels the holiday because the UFC offers him a fight that he can't pass up. And a few of those fights, like Der the Derek Brunson fight over there in New York, um, you know, he spoke about how his knee was sore and how close that fight was to not happening because it wasn't that good. So fighting that frequently while you have an advantage because you're, you're, you're in shape and you've got your distances down and you're not out of form, it's hard on the body. It was great to see the fact that he was able to take some of these trips. I mean, after he beat Calvin Gaslam, I believe he went on some trips and he took a little bit of time. Then he had Robert Whitaker, and you know, he's been all around. I mean, he would go to the States, watch his friends fight, watch UFCs. So this is a guy I think that for a long time stayed um, in Auckland working really, really hard and then got to the point where he was able to enjoy some of the fruits of his labor, do some travel, meet some people, get to make some business deals and really sort of experience what being a champion is all about and then sort of got back to work. Izzy, you're rightfully getting a ton of credit for taking a fight here that you didn't have to, but in your heart of hearts, do you feel like you're catching Romero at a time that he's either been exposed or, or a, a fertile time for you to take care of him? So Robert Whitaker beat him twice, right? Um, I had him winning the, the, the second fight, but Robert Whitaker beat him twice. And not once did anyone say, oh, but he's 43, he's 40, whatever. But when I beat him, that's gonna be the excuse. But beforehand, everyone's saying the same thing you guys are all saying is oh, he's a specimen, he's out of this world, he's a guy that does this and that and rah, rah, rah. I think I'm catching him at the right time and he said he, he, he feels the best he's ever felt even when he was 20 something. That's his own words. So when I beat him, I don't want to hear any excuses. I, I want, I want, 
to my fucking credit. Every time I step in that octagon, every time I step in this arena, every time the camera on me, I, I, there's a low key side of me that feels like I have to prove myself right. fans watching around the world. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. Live from the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas, Nevada. It's time! You know, John, I, you know, Habib walked over here and said, everybody loves Joel Romero, but he lost the fight, right? And he said the people want to, want to fight. It was also on him to engage more. If Izzy's going to run, like he said, it was on him to engage and make it into a fight. Right. He did not do that. And like I said, man, when you don't fight, you, you can't be upset at the result. First question. Israel, at the end of the day, you, you still got the belt around your waist, another defense of the title, but um, probably not the fight that everybody was hoping to see, that was wanting to see. It, it looked like even you looked a little bit disappointed at the end. Um, just, just give me an idea kind of I would, what went wrong, I guess. I mean, who should shoulder blame for the way that fight played out? I mean, it's not the fight I wanted to have. I had a different um, vision for how this fight was going to end, uh, but it takes two to tango. You know, I can't force a guy to fight. I can force him to make mistakes, which I did a little bit by exposing his legs later on. But for me, if a guy stands there for the first two minutes and just has his hands up, am I supposed to risk my belt and get clipped by him? Which I did. I, and I realized, okay, that's a bad move. And I went back to what I do best, which is pick people apart. Um, but yeah, that was really bizarre. I mean, I might as well have just used a training dummy at my gym as my sparring partner, <laughs> you know. He wanted Romero on his resume. He got it. He won the fight. And uh, you have to you take these things fight by fight. Listen, if anybody thinks I'm wrong, raise your hand right now and we can talk about it. The Costa fight's going to be insane. The Costa fight will be ridiculous. Costa will come forward. He will throw big punches. He will throw combinations. He will not stop punching. And Israel Adesanya is going to have to fight him. And I'm telling you right now, just like I told you, Weili Zhang <clears throat> and Joanna was going to be insane, Costa versus Adesanya will be a ridiculous fight. I guarantee it. I'm looking forward to that fight now more than ever because I actually get a guy that's going to not stand there and do like the 52 blocks at me. He's actually gonna come forward, have pressure, and get hit by me a lot. Paulo Costa is a guy that should be next for Israel Adesanya because that's a build up that's gonna be absolutely nuclear. You're gonna have two guys going in there, trash talking each other, not backing down, but also a rare case where you have two guys in their prime, possibly one of the first times in quite some time, going up against each other in this fight. We don't see too many title fights. Yo Romero, fantastic fighter, but he's 42 years old. And even though, you know, he's in unbelievable shape, you could, you could make the argument that maybe a few years before he was in his prime, but also in the wings there. And people are gonna say I'm crazy, but I keep pushing this fight and I'm gonna keep doing it until the end of time. Darren Till, he was not able to get his ne negotiations done with Jared Cannonier. Apparently, the money wasn't right for that fight, and Cannonier is an absolutely brutal fight for anybody in the division. You know, a stadium show in Liverpool, and a guy that's trying to create a legacy like Israel Adesanya, I mean, there's something wrong with Costa, another injury, or there's issues in the negotiations, or they can't come together with the date. I would love to see a striking battle between Darren Till Israel Adesanya in a stadium in Liverpool, it would be absolutely unbelievable. So I think Israel will sort of have all the cards in his hands. And if he feels like he wants Darren Till or Cannoneer um, more so than Acosta, I think the, the, the choice is really going to be his. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. And watch out for your fucking clickbaits. Hey, the, the headlines. I know some of you like to use that to get some, some, some likes, but watch out.
I don't want to block anyone in real life. Thank you.